Lathering with a paintbrush is something that looks easy when you see other people do it but it's actually not. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I learned how to use a paintbrush to do my lettering and share some tips about what you can do to get started as well. Hi everyone, I'm Gadis of Made by Mutiara and welcome to my channel. I do a lot of lettering over on my Instagram and like a lot of you who just learned how to do calligraphy or lettering, I started out with using a brush pen. So when I saw on Instagram people do lettering with a paintbrush, I'm like, yes, I also want to learn how to do that. But when it comes to learning something new, you don't want to dive into the deep end. You want to find the ladder around the pool and then climb down slowly and go to the deep end after that. Because when I tried doing it, oh my gosh, it was a struggle. I had so much difficulty trying to find a way to help me become better at lettering with a brush pen. Brush. So if you are already familiar or moderately confident with lettering with brush pens, then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, let me set up my space first and I'll do a demo for you. The paintbrush I'm using is the Pigeon Letters watercolor brush. You can find this on her website and her Etsy shop as well. This one is a size 4. I also have one that is a size 2. So depending on what you are painting or what you are lettering, you'll choose either one. But for me, I prefer using the size 4 so it's slightly larger as you can see here as compared to the size 2. I'm going to have to do this like a makeup guru, don't mind. But size 4 will definitely hold more pigment than size 2. Or you can also use this called a water brush but I would recommend you not use your glitter handmade paints with this because many of my water brushes had the glitter stuck inside the barrel so the water wasn't able to flow through anymore. So just FYI. So we are going to use a brush pen first to practice and build the muscle memory that we need to do our paint brush strokes. What you can do is to just letter the word first. So I'm just gonna letter the word hey. Just for this tutorial, I'm using a much darker grey than I would normally have. And then I'm just gonna use my paint brush to trace over the grey parts of my lettering. So as you are doing this, your mind wants to focus on what parts need to be thin and what parts need to be thick. And I'm just going to change colour just to show you what it looks like. And the trick is to go as slowly as possible. Just take your time when you are lettering. So sometimes I go back and cover up the parts that I didn't manage to cover. And with every brush stroke that I make, I'm actually slightly holding my breath. You can actually hear me exhale shortly after I finish this E. And if you observe, I'm holding my brush at a 45 degree angle. And of all the strokes that you have to use for lettering, the hardest one has to be the transition from thin to thick in the opposite direction in my opinion. For example, when I lettered the letter H earlier, that transition is not as thin as I like it to be, but it's okay. It's perfectly normal if you cannot do it in one smooth stroke and you have to like do short strokes, but remember, over time as you practice and you get used to holding your paintbrush, you should aim towards doing it all in one stroke. The grey brush pen strokes are there to guide you so that your mind is able to focus on the pressure that you put on with the paintbrush instead of like which direction to go next. One thing to note is that the Tombow Dual Brush Pen is definitely thicker, so if you are using a small paintbrush like this, you may not be able to match the downstroke of the paintbrush to the brush pen over here. So some things you can do is to maybe use a smaller brush pen instead. So this is the Zig Feud Biori brush pen. You can see it's definitely, oh my gosh, makeup guru. It's definitely much smaller as compared to the Tombow. Let me see if I can compare both. So the Zig one is on top, the Tombow one is below. You can see that the zig is smaller. So in terms of becoming broader, this Tombow one can definitely create broader brush strokes. So if I were to stop dropping my pencil, so if I were to letter with this, maybe I'll do the letter hey again. So I can go much smaller. Okay, this is slightly lighter. Ah. 
I'm gonna use the size 2 paintbrush to see how it's different when I'm doing my lettering. I'm just gonna go ahead and speed up this clip over here but as you can see the size 2 paintbrush is definitely smaller and somewhat easier for me to letter with. It actually depends on each person's preference but I do prefer using the thinner paintbrush for watercolor inks and the size 4 paintbrush for handmade watercolors. So once again, when you are lettering for the first time with a paintbrush, you want to try to find a way to hold it such that it's comfortable and know that this is definitely much thinner than your normal brush pen. So it does get some getting used to from holding how you would normally hold a pen and then changing it to hold a paintbrush. And know that you still have to maintain the 45 degree angle when you do the downstroke. So that's something that you have to get used to. I definitely don't hold my pens like this. This is only for my paint brush it's perfectly normal for you to like over grip and trying to like you know it might shake a bit that's normal it's just your body getting used to something that you want to become better in eventually so yeah practice 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 once you are comfortable with the gray brush pens and then you realize that hey i can do this in one smooth stroke smoothly no problem then you can move on to the next step so for someone like me, I still cannot letter in a straight line. I still need some sort of guide to help me to know where to go because when I'm doing lettering with a paintbrush, I'm not so much thinking of the word that I'm lettering. That's why sometimes I do mistakes in terms of the spelling. Instead, I want to focus on the strokes and making sure that they are smooth. So something that I do after I'm comfortable with using the grey brush pen is using a pencil instead. The only downside about using a grey brush pen is that if you happen you know happen to not follow the strokes because maybe at the point of doing a flourish you're like okay i want to go this big instead you cannot erase the gray brush pen but if you use a pencil and you happen to not follow the guide it's fine because after the whole piece has dried you can just cancel cancel you can just erase away the pencil lines so after using the brush pen, you are comfortable with doing the strokes, you are familiar with them, then move on to using a pencil. So I usually like to draw a baseline because like I said, I cannot uh, letter straight. So I'm just going to letter the word um, letter. I'm doing this because I like the letter T's, the double T's and the crossbars. Those are one of my favorite things to letter. I'm going to be using the size 4 brush for this one. So as you can see here, I kind of already lettered it very lightly with my pencil. But just to be safe, I'm going to roll my kneaded eraser over it just so I can remove as much of the graphite from the pencil so that I don't have to worry about erasing it too much at the end. So this is good because it doesn't have any eraser dust and I can control how much of the graphite I want to pick up without affecting the rest. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I hope the camera can see. Now let's do the lettering. Okay, so again, I have my guides. I'm already familiar with the brush stroke, so I just follow. Again, if you're not happy with the thickness, you can definitely make it thicker. And then go up. Change color. Ooh. I like that. -y. And then I'm going to use a darker color to do the crossbar. Oh, gorgeous. Oh my gosh, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so this is dry. So you can see that if it's dry, it doesn't really create a blend. But that's okay. Because what I'll do is go back to the previous color. Just boop, boop. There you go. A fake blend. Oh my god, this is a horrible R. Yeah. 
So as you can see, with a pencil, I more or less did follow all of the lines. I'm not too bothered by the pencil lines at the back. In fact, I think I can still erase it using my needed eraser. This is actually one of my favorite parts about lettering with a paintbrush is doing all the blends and fancy stuff. If you don't have watercolor inks, you can use your inks from your brush pen and maybe use a ceramic plate or a piece of plastic and just extract as much ink as possible from it and then use your paintbrush to pick up the marker ink from there. And of course, if possible, try using or purchasing handmade paints because the glitters and the color shifts are like so pretty and you'll definitely see me using them a lot over on my Instagram page. But yeah, if you find this to be difficult at first, it's completely normal. As I said, you work your way up towards practicing doing the brush strokes without any guidelines by first using the brush pens and then using pencil and then you can do without once you are confident with your strokes. And if you still need guidelines, by all means use guidelines because if anything, that can actually help you see what the whole picture or how, what the whole lettering piece looks like before it's completed. And I would definitely say that this is now my favorite part of lettering and 10 out of 10 will recommend you to try. Let me know down in the comments if you found this tutorial useful and if you have any questions for me, then feel free to leave them down below. And once again, I just want to remind you that you have to give it time to practice and practice and practice before you get familiar and master that skill of lettering with a paintbrush. Something that I really like about the Pigeon Letters paintbrush is that they are definitely more stiff than normal so that when you letter, the bristles will bounce back together creating that smooth and thin upstroke for you. But trial and error, definitely you can use any paintbrush that you have. You don't have to invest in expensive ones. It's just a matter of being familiar with the tool and leveling up and practicing your new skills. Every video I do a shout out to one of you and today's video shout out goes to... Thank you so much for leaving comment in my last video and also sharing it inside your Insta stories where I showed my February bullet journal plan with me set up. It's also Melanie's birthday this week. So yay, go and wish her a happy birthday on her Instagram page. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel and I'll give you more lettering tips in the future. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!